Over the last couple of days, there have been more than 300,000 vehicles that have been recalled for a variety of different issues. This doesn't even include the nearly half a million to a million vehicles that were recalled earlier this month and earlier this year. To say that recalls are a prominent part of 2022 thus far would definitely be an accurate statement to make. But as far as the most recent recalls that were announced, they could have a pretty significant impact on both consumers as well as car sharing hosts. So that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about today. So in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down what you need to know about these recalls, who it is going to be affecting, and of course, how you can prepare and how you can deal with this the most efficient way as possible. So let's get started. Now, if you were to ask me the question of what would be the worst car to get a pretty massive recall across the Turo platform, my answer to you would be one of two things. Number one, it would be the Jeep. The Jeep is a super popular car on Turo. It does extremely well, and a lot of people own a variety of different year models of this car. But my second answer to that question would be the Ford Mustang. The Ford Mustang is incredibly popular on Turo. It's like that perfect mix of economical, plus sporty, plus the luxuriousness that you would want out of a rental car without being too expensive. The other thing about Mustangs and Turo is the fact that people own a wide variety of year models for Mustangs on the Turo platform, which means that this video is going to be particularly difficult for a lot of Turo hosts and a lot of car owners out there because the recall or one of the two recalls that I want to discuss today involves the Ford Mustang. But before we dive into that, let's dig into one of the other recalls that I want to talk about. And though this definitely doesn't affect as many Turo hosts as the Ford Mustang, I think that it does mean quite a lot for Turo hosts because I personally feel like this would have been and could be an extremely hot car on the Turo platform. And that is the Lucid Air. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with the Lucid Air, Lucid is a new vehicle manufacturer that is aimed to compete with Tesla. They produce very high-end luxury sedans that are 100% electric. And they they've recently started rolling out their first and newest addition to their car manufacturing fleet, that is the Lucid Air. This car is priced at $169,000, so it's even priced above a Tesla. It's kind of competing with the higher model Teslas like Tesla Model S Plaids or competing with the Porsche Taycan, but it isn't competing with the vast majority of other cars in the market because of the fact that it's so expensive. Now, over the last year, I've been one of those people to talk about the fact that I think that Lucid could be a really great competitor for Tesla, specifically with Turo, because Teslas are becoming oversaturated on the Turo platform. So going after alternative electric vehicles is something that I think is incredibly smart. The problem though, is that Lucid has just started rolling out their vehicles and they have already announced a recall. According to the NHTSA, which is the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, they made an announcement that Lucid Motors is going to be recalling 203 examples of of their electric vehicle. The reason behind this recall is that the front strut damper may fail, which could trigger a sudden drop in vehicle ride height, which results in damage to the front brake line, which would cause you to lose complete control of your braking system with your vehicle, which is of course not a good thing. But of these 203 vehicles, Lucid estimates that only about 1% of them would have the chance of actually having the brake line damaged. But of course, this is a risk that not only Lucid, but no driver on the road would be wanting to take. Now, I know what many of you guys are thinking, and that is the fact that Lucid is such a small player in the game. Why does it matter that they've recalled their cars? And in my opinion, I think that this is a really bad thing for Lucid because of the fact that it kind of sets the tone of their vehicle quality from the very beginning. And given the fact that they've only released a few hundred vehicles and they have 203 that are affected with this recall, it's simply not a good look. And for the sake of Turo, I think that this is important to keep in mind because of the fact that recalls can be a huge hindrance to you and your Turo fleet. And I think that it's important to be aware of which companies have a history and a repetitive history of recalls. And those are typically the brands that you just want to avoid altogether because recalls are a huge headache and they are worth avoiding if possible. So as far as Lucid goes, I'll be interested to see how they end up fixing this recall, but then what ends up happening over the next couple of months or in the next couple of years, because if they have a track record of recalls in the future, I think that this could potentially be a car to avoid. 
Last, but certainly not least, let's talk about the Ford Mustang, which is a pretty significant deal to Turo hosts. So a couple of days ago, Ford announced that they would be recalling their Ford Mustangs from the year of 2015 to 2017. The problem behind the recall is that the wiring harness for the backup camera may be damaged or have an improper solder connection that can prevent an image from being displayed. Now, ultimately what ended up triggering this recall is the fact that there were so many people that were Ford Mustang owners that were having issues with their backup camera, there were 8,500 warranty claims that were filed because of this issue, which ultimately led to a recall being triggered. Now, in total, there has been 330,000 Ford Mustangs that have been recalled because of this issue, and Ford estimates that 100% of the 2015 to 2017 year model Fords have been affected by this problem, and thus they'll need to be remedied with the recall. Ford did release a little bit more details about this specific recall, and it's actually two two separate issues that are in the umbrella of this entire recall. Ford stated that the first issue is a camera installed between May 2014 and February of 2015 with an improper solder on a circuit board. And the second issue is a wiring harness that was used between February 2014 and October of 2017. This wiring harness can get caught on the trunk, which can cause it to become inoperable. Now Ford will be sending out a recall notice on March 7th to all affected owners. And then you will of course have to go get it fixed. Now, the thing about this is that yes, this recall is very, very minor. I mean, it is the backup camera. If anybody is getting hurt because of the fact that their backup camera isn't operating effectively, well, I don't know what to say about that. The issue is definitely minor and it definitely doesn't compare to a suspension issue that can cause your brakes to fail. But the big thing, and I think a huge problem with the Mustang recall specifically, is because of the fact that the Ford Mustang is such a prevalent car on the Turo platform. And I know many of you who watch my videos have a Mustang that is listed on Turo. And so getting the news that this car has been recalled, especially for the years of 2015 to 2017, this can be a pretty big punch to the gut. Now, whenever a recall happens, whether you're somebody who's driving a car for personal use, or if you're renting that car out on Turo, the very first thing that you'll need to do is take the car to your dealership to get the issue fixed. This is of course, step number one. But if you're renting out this car on Turo, then the very first thing that will happen for you is your car will become delisted on the Turo platform. That means that you're not allowed to rent out that car until you get that issue fixed. Now, if you're curious and if you want to learn more about why this is the case and the different laws and regulations surrounding recalls and rental cars, I did cover this in a video that I made recently. I will include a link down to that in the description below. But the thing is, is that if you're not able to get the recall fixed right away, either because your schedule prohibits it, because your dealership doesn't have any availability for you, whatever the case is, then you run the risk of having your reservations for Turo ended up getting canceled. Because the reality is, legally speaking, you cannot rent a car out that has an open recall. So getting that addressed as soon as possible is one of the best things that you can do. But alternatively, if you're somebody that doesn't have a Ford Mustang, but you have a Ford Mustang-like vehicle, this could be a really good option opportunity to see some extra reservations. You see, the timing of this recall is actually really bad for people that own a Mustang. Typically speaking, if somebody owns a Mustang, they're probably going after vacationers for their Turo rentals. So places in beach cities, vacation destinations, things like that. And if you're somebody who is renting a car for your spring break and that reservation gets canceled because of an outstanding recall, that's where you can swoop in and you can take that reservation. So again, if you're somebody that has a car that is similar to a Ford Mustang, like a Corvette, like any sort of other sporty car out there, I would encourage you to make sure that your cars are prepped and ready to go. That way, if some last minute bookings are needed, you can go in and provide that car. And of course, you can also experiment with raising your prices a bit. I've heard that that type of tactic can be very successful, and I think that it's something to keep in your back pocket. Like always, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I hope it gave you some valuable insight into the newest information regarding vehicle recalls and how it can affect many hosts throughout the entire country. Like always, if you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell. And I'll see you guys in the next video.